Hey guys, I'm Mark Harris with Gateway Worship, and I have a dear friend with me today, and he's not just my friend, but he's a friend of Gateway Church. Uh, he actually served here for a season. Uh, Dr. Pete Sanchez uh, was with Integrity Music and is just one of the, one of absolutely my favorite teachers on the subject of worship. Uh, he's now serving at uh, New Life Church in Colorado Springs, yeah. beautiful place with yeah, Pastor Brady indeed. Boyd. But for a season, he was with us at the King's University overseeing the worship department there. I, I am so excited that you are here with us today, Dr. Pete. Well, I'm excited to be here. It's always great to see you. Yeah. Uh, you are good for my soul. <laughs> you are, that's why, that's why I could say why, the same. That's why I come. You, you are good for my soul. Yeah, I mean, we love you and yeah, Karen, yeah. your dear friends. Well, thank you. Um, you know, you were responsible for praying us here. That's how we got here. You know that. <laughs> I didn't pray hard enough because yeah. you didn't stay. You went well, to Colorado Springs. Yeah. I should have kept praying. You should have kept praying. To keep you. But, but, I, but you left the heat for the nice, cool air of the mountains. I did. It is different here. <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah, anyways, it's great to be here, Mark. Uh, it's so so awesome to have you here with us. We were talking yesterday, and, and I just brought up the song that everyone knows and loves in the church, mm -hmm. and it is a classic, even though it's not as old as a, an Amazing Grace song or, or How Great Thou Art. It will be soon. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not. I think it's one of those songs that will endure and that will be around uh, just for generations. Um, and it's the song that we love and we all sing, I Exalt Thee. What mm. a song. Mm. Like I remember the first time I heard that song, I was like, what is this? Mm. And uh, it's just one of those songs that feels mm. like it's been around forever. Yeah. I I want you to tell us just where that song come, mm. came from and, and just a little bit about this song. I know you all know I Exalt Thee. If you don't, I don't know where you've been because we, we've sung it so much. Mm. But tell us about sure. that song, yeah. just the creation of the song, where it came from, how it was birthed. Well, I, you know, I think um, the, the whole dynamic that moved me into the whole worship area from just commercial music was this sense of the presence of God, yeah. um, the, the resurrecting spirit of God. Uh, who raised Jesus from the dead. That it always excites me when I think about that, that the same Spirit that raised Him from the dead is the same one that will raise us at the end. And that's the dynamic that works in the church, works in us, and I mm -hmm. think it works in writers as well. So, I mean, I've known artistry and creativity and those kinds of things, but there's something about, about the presence of God that you begin to realize that's something that's, that you experience that's given, you don't own. Uh, it's something that's entrusted uh, to you. And I think uh, as I, I first experienced that with I uh, I I was a writer. I was trying to write through the Psalms. <laughs> I'd made a commitment to write one song from every Psalm before I died. And I was in my 20s, my late 20s, and I was singing piano. And I, I'm going through the scriptures. And for that day, in Psalm 97 came up. And so I'm reading through it, trying to find a hook, <laughs> trying to find something that would capture my heart. And for whatever reason, the, the, the verse 9 stuck out to me, for thou, Lord, art high, thou art exalted, high above all the mm. earth. And so I started playing, started singing. It was, it was purely devotional. It was never meant to go anywhere outside that apartment. It was purely devotional. And so every so often I'd sit at the piano, sing it again, and I, I'd sense something on the song, but it was unfinished. I could mm. tell it was unfinished. So I kept asking the Lord, where is this supposed to go? And so for six months I battled with that song, trying to finish it. And then one Sunday morning, and um, it was in April of the year, it was a cool morning. My wife was running a little bit late for church, so I went back to the piano. And I sat there and I, start, I again played the, first, the verse part. And then as I got to the chorus and began singing I Exalt Thee, it's as though, literally, it's the only way I can describe it, it's, though it's, it's as though I walked into another room. It was, I was singing, but I was somewhere else. Wow. It was a, it was a out of body experience. I mean, it sounds weird, but it, uh, to this day, I mean, it's, it's, it's like it was yesterday. I, it, was, it was this eternal moment that I could not have created, that I could not have scripted, yeah. that I could not have expected or anticipated. It, I was just with the text, singing the text, and it's though the Lord went, 
Wow. And I walked into a room. And I remember the, the, the chills I got and the, the, the feeling that I had. And I stepped away from the piano and I thought to myself, oh, what was that? What was that? <laughs> and then Karen came out, we went to church. And, and uh, I thought, well, thank you, Lord. I appreciate you doing that for me, you know? And um, then I was invited to a songwriters conference in Mississippi uh, with, um, it was a national songwriters conference of some sort. And, and we had all been asked to submit two songs. Mm. And so uh, I rolled out my best two. <laughs> I was last on the schedule, uh, rolled them out. Everybody clapped and everybody enjoyed them. And then there was a pause and the moderator turned to me and he didn't do this with anybody else. He turned to me and he said, do you have anything else? And I thought to myself, oh no, all I have is I exalt thee. <laughs> so I said, I have a little <sighs> chorus that I've written. So I started singing it. And when I got to the chorus, to my surprise, it was though a, a lightning bolt ran through the room. Wow. Everybody in the room, without exception, jumped to their feet, mm. hands shot into the air. They were singing at the top of their lungs and tears were rolling down their face. And I was sitting behind the keyboard having this out of body experience, yeah. wanting to say to them, no, 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 that, that's the simplest song I've ever written. These other songs <laughs> are much more robust, you, you know, they'll last a lot longer. But I felt like the Lord was saying to me, I've chosen this one. My mm. hand is on this song. So even as a songwriter, I've learned that you can write and write and write and write. Yeah. But there, for some reason, there are just those songs that endure. Mm -hmm. There's those songs that, that's got a touch of eternity on them. And so I'm, I, I was forever shaped by those two events, being in a space that I couldn't create, I couldn't make it happen, I couldn't, I couldn't go back and try to you know, duplicate it again. It was yeah. something where the Lord, I just could, could sense the literal manifest presence of God that's what I learned it was later. And then in that room to see, it went from my piano to a big room of men and women and writers who had never heard the song before. We yeah. were simply ushered into that same space again. And then a little bit later, I got a, a cassette tape. You remember what those are. <laughs> and I got a cassette tape oh, yeah. with 10 nations singing in their language, I Exalt Thee, overseas. I cried, oh, I just wow. wept. Because I never shopped the song. Yeah. I never intended to shop the song. I didn't meet with a publisher. I didn't try to convince anybody this was a good song for a project. <laughs> God just took it and went, Breathe and, on. and And honestly, I've walked into huge meetings where they're singing I Exalt Thee. Nobody knows my name. Nobody knows anything <laughs> about me. Thousands of people singing. And I'll just tear up again. Because yeah. I remember there was a moment, the birthing moment of that was in a space that you, it was a thin place between heaven and earth. Oh, wow. It was a thin place. And I, I was ushered into a moment and the Lord said, in his goodness, I'm going to do something good for you. Mm -hmm. That that now I see part of that good thing that God did for me through that song was to bring me to a place like this, to meet somebody like you. I didn't know that back then. <laughs> I didn't know anything about Gateway. Gateway didn't yeah. exist. Matter of fact, integrity music didn't exist. How old were you when you wrote that song? I was about 27, 28. Wow. Um, and it was one of, I mean, I'd written hundreds of songs, yeah. but it was that song that the Lord has used both to remind me I'm with you, but, and also to remind me that uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't because of how talented you were. It was about how faithful you were mm. with what you had at the moment. I love that. And, uh, and I, I rem remember Jesus saying, he who is faithful in a little thing yeah. will be given much. And so for me, every time I hear it sung, even at New Life, when I hear them sing it, there's something in me that goes, you know, Lord, thank you. I don't, I don't understand this. Yeah. I, I don't really understand how you do this. Um, but I'm grateful that there's a song that appears at least for over four decades now, uh, has something of the enduring kiss of God on it. Oh yeah, and so I encourage our writers write the songs that matter, write the songs that endure, write the songs that come out of the presence of God. Um, yes, your artistry serves that, but the instrument the Lord wants to play is you. Mm. He wants to sing through you. That's it's good. Not, it's not just your song, but can He sing through you? And, and that has all kinds of implications for what you're rooted in, what you're what, what you're digesting, what your intake is what your time with the Lord off platform really is, all mm. those things. I, I'm waiting for the songs, especially in this time that we're living in now, 
songs that had this prophetic touch to them that usher people into a place they can't create, mm -hmm. they can't politicize, they can't argue over, they, they can't debate over, because everything I believe has changed in the presence of God. And for me, I Exalt Thee has been, at least for me, for my family, for my grandchildren, one of those gifts to the Lord, from the Lord to us that says, I loved you before you ever loved me. <laughs> And I'm going to continue to love the generations after you, even if nobody ever knows your name. Uh, and I say to the Lord, Lord, you don't owe me anything. I owe you everything. And I exalt that he constantly reminds me, the Lord has done good to you. Yeah. And so uh, I, I, I quote this, the passage, I've been young, now I'm old. Yeah. But I've never seen the, the righteous forsaken. And oh. I've never seen his seed begging for bread. And that's my testimony. After all these years, after every place we've been yeah. and seen, the churches we've seen, the ministries we've seen, uh, the, the Lord's way is best. It's good. It's a good way, even if you can't plan it out from the beginning. Mm -hmm. If He brings me to people like the people in this room, with yes. you, Gateway, New Life, I'm a, I'm a blessed person Amen. because the Lord said, uh, the righteous will never, never be forsaken. So uh, We were having a great conversation yesterday, so um, I, I love to hear you talk about worship. Mm -hmm. um, I, love, I love to hear you really talk about theology and Scripture. But uh, we were talking about songs and, and just where songs come from. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I was sharing with you that I'd recently written with a writer from Nashville, and, and she told me a story of this guy that died, went to heaven. He was a songwriter, and when he got to heaven, um, he heard one of his songs being sung in heaven uh, in the midst of all these other melodies that were going you know, on there. And he's like, it was just a musical dimension that no one could explain because it was beyond natural, it was supernatural. Mm -hmm. But he said that he heard one of his songs being sung. Mm -hmm. And he asked the angel, he said, that's one of my songs. <laughs> and the angel said to him, oh, every song that you hear on earth begins in heaven. Mm -hmm. And so the thought was, we're just songwriters that are listening for what's already written. Uh, yeah. we're, we're not really the originator of the song. That song, mm -hmm. like w when I write a song as a songwriter, you write a song as a songwriter, we're, we're just that day trying to hear what's going on in heaven. And so that picture of, we're just, is, if we're the writer, it's like I was talking to one of our young worship writers and worship leaders, Zach Rowe, and he said, I, I think I just wrote a song and maybe we just heard it first in the room because it sounded like it had already been written. And I was like, yeah, that's what mm -hmm. happens when we write songs. It's just we're listening, trying to hear what's already going on in heaven and stewarding mm -hmm. that. That's right. Um, and I exalt the, uh, it sounds like a song that, that came from heaven. You know, mm -hmm. it's like one of those songs that God inspired, God breathed. And, uh, and I'm just glad you were listening. And, and I love the story of it was six months kind yeah. of a period of time where you heard the verse and then the chorus came and you thought, this is too simple. And yeah, uh, I think there's something to be learned from that for young writers just to think, hey, you know, it doesn't always have to be a long, complicated song, yeah. but but really hear what the Holy Spirit's right. saying. Right. And that song, you know, it's like, I think that song has brought you some notoriety but what I love about that song is that song really is a song that makes God famous. <laughs> you know, He's already yeah. famous, yeah. but it talks all about, and the, the lyric is just literally about Him being yes. lifted. It's vertical. Uh, yeah. It's vertical. Yeah. I, I'm so I'm glad you you like heard the verse and you didn't give up on the song, but you just kept leaning in. Yeah. Um, I think that is a really good thing for a young writer to take away. Don't give up on what God gives you. No, that's right. If you know it's inspired, if you know it's from the Holy Spirit. Stay with it. And, and if writers can understand that what they ultimately produce, what, what ultimately comes out of them, um, they don't have a say as to where that ends up. Yeah. You know, it's everything's a stewardship. You write because you love the Lord. Yeah. You, you write out of your relationship with the Lord. And he, he will determine, and I've watched it over and over again, writers who want to be known and writers who are just trying to just um, write out of their love for the Lord, write out of their experience with the Lord. And I've watched the Lord and when He puts His hand on one and not another. Yeah. You know, and I've never been able to really explain that. Yeah. Uh, but I know because I love the church, I, in this day and this time, 
there's more of a need for the presence of God, the manifest presence of God, the presence of God that makes the people roar and praise. Mm. That, that it's not a you know it's 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 they've been fed well by the worship team. They've been yeah. they've been uh, uh, introduced to this um, resurrecting spirit that is able to resurrect them too. Yes. So when they sing, it's not just about them singing songs. There is. There's life been sung over them. There's life happening in them, and they go out, you know, with a, with a song in their heart that captures them, captures their day, captures their their week. I think the the culture that we're in right now, as it's at a lot of places, they're deconstructing themselves. Well, I think the resurrecting spirit is the reconstructing spirit, mm. well, and, and I think that uh, we songwriters have a chance right now more than ever to be a prophetic voice if they're willing to write the songs that endure, mm. that people can sing in every season of their life, not just in one particular season of their life. That if, it, when it comes to it, you know, they, they have given a gift to the world that's bigger than themselves, mm. that lasts. And I, I know that uh, as I listen to songs, I tell writers all the time, the key is the presence of God. Whether it's, young, whether it's old, whether it's an old hymn or a new modern song, if you can just get in the place the writer was when he wrote the song, that eternal place, mm -hmm. everything comes alive again. And that's and that, that's what I, that's why I keep telling young writers, do not blow off the hymns. Mm -hmm. there, there's a gift there. There's a treasure in the field, but you gotta take the whole field <laughs> if you I want the that. treasure. And so uh, if we'll do that, if we'll be faithful to what's been given, yep. our future will be bright because the Lord will continue to invest in writers. But you can't blow off the past and think you have a future. Yeah, You've got to be grateful for the past yeah. so that you can get to a future. I love what you said uh, in a conversation a little earlier, and we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up here. You, you say, when you get with young worship leaders or young worship writers, yeah. you say, hi, I'm Dr. Pete, and I'm from your future. <laughs> it, it, shocked, it shocks everybody, for sure. Uh, but, but I think, you know, I think what it does, it gives them pause to understand yeah. there's a way forward. Yes. Uh, and. Um, if they'll listen to people like yourself and people that have seasoning and experience who have persevered, which is a, a great teaching about how to get to your future, sometimes you just gotta stick to it, just keep after it. Yeah. If you can do that, you'll end up, there, there are people and opportunities and places of ministry and songs, uh, incredible things that are up ahead. Yeah. If you if you can just learn uh, to listen, learn to receive, learn to look for those that can speak into your life. We need fathers and mothers in yeah. the worship arena more today than ever before, and it's that it's that anchoring in somebody that's older than you, uh, maybe better than you, yeah. uh, wiser than you, that will be the source of your wisdom. Will Absolutely. be the source of what you give to the generations that are coming. I tell our worship leaders all the time: there are people out there that are waiting for your obedience that you'll miss yeah. if you don't handle your stuff now. That's good. Um, so don't give that up. They're waiting yeah, for you because it's a long road. Yeah, it's a long road. Yeah, they're, they're waiting and, for and you. And where you are today uh, will not be where you are ten years from now. No, that's right. And and uh, and I think you're such a gift to the body of Christ. Yeah. I know you are to, to me. I know you have been to Gateway Church. And uh, I know you, uh, you're you such a gift to new life. And mm -hmm. uh, I know we're friends as far as churches. Yeah. We, we mm -hmm. love partnering together. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I know that for all the young writers there and the young worship leaders, you're such a tremendous blessing to them mm -hmm. because you are a father yeah. in the church, you and Karen, father yeah. and mother. Yeah. And uh, I just want to say it's been awesome to have you with us. Thank you. <laughs> we love you. We're grateful for your friendship, grateful for all that you've poured into us here and hope that you continue to, to do that. You're welcome back anytime. Mm, we you. love you at Gateway Church, Gateway mm. Worship. So grateful for you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. And can I just say to you yes. in, in closing too, that every time I'm around somebody like you, I taste that moment again. Mm. Thank when you. I, when I say, you're good for my soul. Amen. I look for worship leaders and people that way where I taste a moment again. So thank you for your friendship. Amen. It's a place I can drink and eat and go back refreshed. Thank come you. on, come back, come back often. <laughs> God bless, guys. Yeah, thank you.